Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Oh, welcome to Drinking Bros, kids. Man, Friday afternoon, having some drinks. At least I am. Um, am, I, am I a horrible human that it's just me drinking? Recovery. You know, burnt guys love water. We need water. Is that, is that true? Is that true? You got to keep drinking water all, all the time, ends. right? All the time. Those hot spots. <laughs> <laughs> if you're on audio and not watching on video, this burnt guy is Bobby Henline. Welcome to the show, buddy. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, hell yeah, man. Um, funny story. So uh, one of my, one of our mutual good friends, who's uh, which you didn't know, was one of my best friends from college. Yeah. Big big shot movie producer um, had called me and said, "Hey, man, uh, I met the most fascinating guy." I'm dying to tell his life story in a movie one day. His name is Bobby Henline. You should look him up and get a hold of him, and he, he would be perfect on the show. Uh, when I looked you up, I was like, oh, fuck, I know him. I, I know I, guy. I, I met him before, yeah. We actually met, I think, at the Range 15 yeah. premiere. Yeah. And I was like, I fucking know Bobby. I was like, give me, give me his number. I'd love to have him on the show. And I hit you up, and I was like, next time you're in Wilmington, stop by, pop, pop on down to the Drinking Bro Studios, and, uh, and we'll have you on. So thanks for being here, man. Yeah, here I am. Uh, what are you in town for? Uh, I actually have a show tomorrow night. No which, shit. Yeah, by the time this airs, it'll be over. You missed it. Yeah, it's gone. It's gone, right? <laughs> it's gone. You're doing stand-up. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing stand-up comedy, so I got a show tomorrow night with another one at Vet Joe Cash now, who's an Army scout, lost his leg, and then with Skippy. I don't know if you guys remember Family Ties. You guys both look old enough for Family Ties. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking Skippy from Family Ties? Yeah, Mark Price. It's, so it's Skippy and the Comedy Warriors, so we're doing a show here <clears throat> tomorrow night. That is Fucking funny, man. Yeah, this I never, is Gippy. I never watched that show, but um, Mark, red-haired. He's the red-haired. Mark guy. Price was a good point guard for a while uh, for the Cleveland Cavaliers. <laughs> yeah. He was. You're a Cleveland fan, right? The Indians, just the Indians, Indians only. Baseball. That you know, it, it's funny thing about Cleveland fans. They're either diehard Browns or Indians. I never hear like, oh man, I'm a I'm a real big Cavs fan. It's funny. I just I pick a team. Like, I grew up in California. Yeah, but it's, I go with the Steelers. Mm -hmm. I go with the Indians. I used to like the Dodgers because of Steve Garvey. Ah, Garvey was Steve badass. Garvey, they had those big forearms. I always had big, weird forearms. So yeah. I was always number six. I wanted to be like Steve Garvey. Yeah, he was a, he was a badass, too. Yeah. Uh, he pounded off a lot. That's where he got those forearms from. Yeah. Gotcha. They were, he, was, they, he had Popeye-like forearms. Yeah, yeah. he I did it from guy. batting all the time. He, I did it from long deployments. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, the same. it's essentially the right? same thing. Same thing. Um, I built but, him up in Desert Storm. That's what it was. Yeah, all you guys, dude. That's, <laughs> the masturbation techniques are really, un, I, I would say Amer the American troops are the best in the world. Well, I mean, if you're jerking off six times a day, you got to spice it up a little bit. Yeah, 130 degrees weather in a porta potty, you got to get out of there quick for your yeah. guy. Yeah. What do you guys use for lube on something like that? Mm -mm. You're sweating. You don't need lube. Yeah. Oh, you just go. Just you're take good that to go. from under yeah. cheese and bring it on up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Can't co sign on that one. The look on your face when he said that, Dan, was. I'm all set on that one. That's a, Full that's battle a rattle. Mm. That's a gift that will last for years and years and years. Self-liberated. Well, where are you from originally? I actually grew up in the Bay Area in San Jose, California. Mm. In oh, that area. Shit. Yeah. I lived in Oakland for a while. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I drove trucks all over there. I was a Navy brat and mm. stepdad stationed at Moffett Field. Are you so, uh, super liberal? No. I'm kidding. I'm glad I left. <laughs> Obviously, yeah, right? I left and I like to claim Texas now, you know? Yeah, of course. I lived there in San Antonio the last 11 years before I moved to North Carolina and love Texas. You know, it's always scary to tell people, where are you really from? Yeah. California. Exactly. Especially like, the bear. Yeah. Right. People are shitting in the streets. and Yeah, it's all my fault that the economy's bad. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody assumes, man, if you're pro 2A, you know, yeah. that you're like, there's no way you would live there. And it's just like, well, I didn't have a choice. It's got the spots. Yeah. Um, how, how, how long did you live in, in the Bay Area? I grew up there pretty much uh, kindergarten through high school. I joined the Army at 17 out of uh, San Jose there and went off to Desert Storm. Yeah. And 19 years old, I was a divorced alcoholic war veteran. At 19? Yeah, which most, I mean, most guys today understand that too, with the uh, war going on, what, 20 years now? Yeah, of course. So, of course. Uh, would you get married at 18 then? And I got married at 17 because my parents signed for me to go in the Army at 17, so then I'm a legal adult. I got married the day before I graduated basic training. No way. They let you do that. They go off both. You get married at a bank out in Missouri at Fort Leonard Wood. And then Are you kidding? Yeah, stay in a hotel, and the next day you graduate basic training, and then they ship you off to school and ship your new wife home. Wow. Who was the girl? We met at, I was a DJ at the roller skating rink. 
I had the cool mullet. You were? You were yeah. DJ? Dude, I worked at a fucking roller rink too, man. It's a badass job. I mean, if you want to get late in high school, <laughs> I wasn't in high and you look school. like this. Uh, <laughs> this was like two weeks ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. It was, it was uh, freshman year in college. It was close, but trying to make extra money. Valentine's Day money. So I was not a cool DJ, though. I was a fucking skate referee. You want a little whistle? <laughs> Stop. That's, that's exactly what it was. Yeah. And, but Time I didn't out. realize how hard the job was because you just skate for eight hours straight. Mm. And then whistle at kids and tell them to sit out and all that shit and like the blisters and everything that came with it. I like that I'm saying it to a burn victim. <laughs> yeah, obviously, the blisters. But, uh, horrible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Terrible. But uh, that that job was brutal. And I always looked at the DJ and I was like, man, because the DJs were always getting pussy. Yeah. And we it, was, were, it was great. We were sweaty, wearing those stinky ass jerseys. Like, what song and shit. you want to hear? Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. I got a six pack of beer. We'll go to the park after skating. That's how you did it. <laughs> those skate DJs always got fucking pussy. <laughs> So you met her at the rink? Yeah, I met her at the rink. She was actually going to a continuation school. You know, where they go once a week to get a bunch of homework. Yeah. And they go home and do it and turn them in. So I actually signed off that she was at the skating rink so she'd get PE credit. <laughs> <laughs> Man. So I'm like, this is the woman of my dreams. <laughs> I should join the army and marry her. Some low-level organized crime going on. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So at 17, your parents thought it was all right. Her parents thought it was all right. And, and you guys were good? Yeah, the, the route we were going, they knew it was probably the best thing for us. Mm. Really? <laughs> they might as well not make each other miserable instead of two other people. That's so fucking funny, man. Uh, how long did that last? Uh, it's right after Desert Storm. <laughs> so what? So that was 89. Okay. I joined Army in 89, and uh, I got out in 92. So yeah, I got back from Desert Storm in 91. Yeah, that was it. You're looking at uh, typical. I mean, like today, a little time. So you're young. You shouldn't get married that young. Yeah. Military life's hard enough as it is with couples. So I got back, found out she was sleeping with everybody else. I'm like, okay, I'm done with you. Really? Yeah. Shit. That and sucks. It, I didn't really blame her though. I mean, it upset me at the time, of course. It's like, ah, but it's like, fuck it. What, what am I going to do? Yeah, you were overseas. I, yeah, and I know we were dumb. You know, it, it comes along. You learn. Like, ah, you look back. Yeah, we stayed friends over the years. Oh, yeah, that was, that was my next question. So you guys are still yeah, friends? Yeah, so we hadn't seen each other for years. And it was, what, 2012? Uh -huh. And I ran into her. She's in Canada, in Toronto. Really? So I'm in Toronto at a film mm -hmm. festival with Comedy Warriors. And yeah. we just happened to, she's like, hey, I live in Toronto now. So she came out and saw the movie. We hung out. I'm like, God, if you were this funny back then. But apparently she likes women now. So that's what I did to her. Wow. Well, did you give it a shot? Did you give it one last shot? No. Damn. She, I didn't have the right parts. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like mean, those parts anymore. There, are, you know, there are a number of people who've overcome that particular hurdle. For example, yeah, one of them is a former Olympic gold medalist. Uh, yes, goddamn right. Now That's what will do to you. Is not a man, apparently. Yeah, Bruce Jenner. Yeah, talking, talking about Bruce. I still, I still call him Bruce. I'm not going to go the Caitlyn route. Like it's, he, he is and <clears> always <throat> will be Bruce Jenner to me. Right. Yeah, and, and I still think looks. of him as a champion. I put a picture of him above my bed, and I have sex with my wife looking at him. You know? I don't think about Caitlyn. I really want to preface this. Uh, you picture that. him as it, Bruce. Just that as Bruce is a John champion. Moore. There yeah. was the champion thing. Did you, you feel like a champion? If Caitlyn yeah. yeah. Jenner did Hustler, would you look? Yes. Oh, was I, I was supposed to hesitate <laughs> on that? <laughs> Man, that was a real quick <laughs> I was, answer. Like, I want to know. <laughs> I would be curious. Yep. I would. There's no question. How are you not curious that you would look? Uh, yes, I, I would look, but I, I couldn't get off to it. No, that's not the point. Okay, I'm not saying I couldn't. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I've I don't know. I have to see it first. <laughs> jerked off in a fucking port of shitter that gets emptied on Wednesday. That now was on Wednesday, the right. morning of. So you know, it's you ever have to shake one of them down because they're too full. You have to just shake uh, it. Sometimes you got to do the haji squat over the top. Yes, of the bowl leave there. your footprints up yeah. there. <laughs> Yeah. Oof! It has the stink in there, though. It's it's the Jeez. worst thing you've ever smelled in your life. God damn it! What do you mean? How's the stink? Imagine now. Imagine that, and then your only picture is Caitlyn Jenner post. -op You're not from exactly Hustler. setting up an optimal <laughs> jerking off situation. But if I was super bored, You're set and the mood. This was the 11th fucking pound off session of the day. Then yeah. maybe that's what, how far I got to go. I don't know. <laughs> you don't know until you get there, man. To be honest, I don't. I don't know what to tell you. Like, hey, how do you get across that bridge? You'll see. <laughs> You'll see, dude. Just go up to it and look at where the fucking footsteps are. That's where you go. Follow the footsteps. <laughs> yeah, but in this case, the footsteps are the uh, the terrible places that your brain go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you had um, the fucking picture of Caitlin's pocket, you know, that would be, that's as, that's as 
That's the worst like as I we, can think ooh, of right now. You Why just isn't he sell that or she sell that? Like that's, that's crazy. So we, Dan, it's funny you bring that up. Dan oh. and I have had this discussion numerous times. Um, I that I would keep so it in rich. a jar. Yeah, I would keep it in a jar. Sell the dick and balls, mean? Yeah. Or sell pictures. What were you talking oh, about? Oh, I thought making the uh, a pocket pussy out of the new one. Oh yeah, oh, that's good maybe, marketing. Maybe uh, you could have Caitlin. Fuck, that's a that's a great one. I'm actually. sure there's a come. You can make it the Wheaties edition. Yeah, <laughs> hang a gold medal around that thing. The it's Champions like a, edition, <laughs> free toy in the box. Of cereal. It would definitely that'd be the first time you could buy the genitals of an Olympian. <laughs> I I think Lance Armstrong. Wait, he was in the he, Olympics. He was in the Olympics. He no. wasn't? No, dude. No, but they, had, France, they had biking for one for one or two sessions, remember? I don't know. Maybe he did, but... Yeah. Speaking of Caitlin, I know what you guys uh, left this lip gloss or stuff for this. Yeah. Ladies, that's uh, drink, so drinking broettes. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, you, I, you didn't want to go with drinking broads? They didn't like that one? No, they didn't. They were... Dr- drinking <laughs> hoes. Uh, drinking bitches. We, we, we pitched a lot of things, and uh, yeah, none of those stuck. Um, but you were in Desert Storm. Like the, you were OG... Yes, I'm yeah, old. You're old as shit is what he's right, right, right. polite yes. Don't look to say. that old. It's that, all that's the why I'm asking. plastic surgery that, <laughs> that makes him look younger. That, that, yeah, yeah. Look I younger? think he might be getting a little carried away with the plastic surgery at this point. <laughs> you get, just dial it back a little Are bit. Are you getting burned out on these jokes already? <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. This is going to be a... <laughs> it's a groaner. Uh, this, this is going to be a one-upper of uh, plastic surgery jokes. I like it. Um, yeah, I, I'll be 49 this year in September. Fuck, man. I just go the next it. year when January hits. Just so I don't forget my age. Yeah. Yeah. January hits. I'm the new age. I just Some, stay that all year. I'm 49. <laughs> that's funny, man. You, you definitely don't look it. What is that where your injuries happened? No, uh, I came back from Desert Storm, actually. Got out for 10 years. I was Holy out of the shit. Army for 10 years. I worked on the railroad. I drove trucks. Uh, I worked at a radio station. I was a Fleetwood Mac tribute band roadie. <laughs> and really? to make a buck. Yeah. <clears throat> what was the name of the, the Fleetwood Mac tribute Rumors. band? Rumors. <laughs> It's always something clever like that. Yeah, yeah. I was in. We were just in Vegas, and the the posters for the Prince one was up yeah. everywhere, <clears throat> and it was Purple Rain, R E I G N, and Oof. I was just like, and the guy looked nothing like Prince, and I was that's, like, oh, that's yeah. cringy. Uh, speaking of railroads, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's the most famous song about railroads? I've oh, been working on the railroads railroad. all the Why is it in day? English? Huh? Why is it in English? <laughs> you think it used to be in Chinese? Yes. <laughs> We did not build this bitch. <laughs> no. I've always wondered about that, and I feel like we're doing a disservice to the Chinese. There was a mixture. So well, there's Chinese, and there were also the Irish. black Americans were working on that, yeah. too. Yeah, and, I, and a lot of Irish. It's true. Um, but uh, yeah, everybody knows the Chinese. Y- yeah, they got, they got all the credit for it Yeah, um, back in the day. But I think I, I watched that show, Hell on Wheels. Yeah, I was just going to say that. Yeah, yeah I just watched that. And it was it. all like powerful white dudes. And then like they kind of kept the Asians in the background. Where it was like, yeah. Oh, yeah, keep working. And it was fine. None of them <laughs> had like any speaking lines and shit like that. Like, That's the thing. Well, they eventually though. bring them in. Asians, yeah. 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 Asians never get on camera time in, ho- in American Hollywood movies. Well, never. they are now since, since Asia owns Hollywood. Kind of. Yeah. Which, what was the Asian superhero in fucking the Marvel movies? There isn't one, is there? No. Whoop. <laughs> but Parasite won everything. Because know. they don't give a shit in China Yeah, about nationality or any of that stuff. They want to be entertained. It's true. And they just want action. And then yeah. they want uh, Anime. T- to control yeah. the thoughts and that's, feelings. That's why you everyone. can make a movie, The Great Wall, and starring Matt Damon. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The white savior who saved China, apparently. Yeah. Well, I mean, Tom Cruise saved Japan, so Matt Damon had to do something. Yeah. Something. For the resume. Something. Yeah, do something. Um, why'd you get back in after 10 years? 9-11. Ah. So it I, seems you to were be in, the invo- continuous. You were involved in 9-11? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> it's like, yeah, I got back in to fucking blow them buildings okay, up. Okay, back in, I had to do something. <laughs> <laughs> that, that seems to be the continuous theme that always pops up on this show. Yeah, um, definitely. Uh, there, a lot of prior service. When I went back in, I was back in. Base, I do back to basics because I was out so long. Mm-hmm. So I was, was back October 31st off to basic training. Halloween. Yep, that wow. very next month. That's that's crazy. What's it? Lo- I don't think we've ever had anybody who went back to basic training. What's that like? A lot easier the second time. I mean, the first time, obviously, physically it was easier, but mentally it was tougher. Yeah. This time around, I mean, it's mentally. I just, I, you know, your buddies with the drill sergeants, but physically, yeah. at thirty years old, it takes a toll on your body. Mm. <laughs> I bet, man. And do you? Is there any resentment? Like, do you look at the kids that that were in with you, and you were like, "Hey, man." Get your fucking shit together. Like, it's fine. No, you you know, you try to talk to them. Some will come up to you and ask you advice since you, they know you've been through it. There was 
five of us in my platoon that had been through basic training before. Mm. This prior service was coming back like crazy. Like we were on holdover for a while because there are so many prior service wanting to come back in. I would be giving them the worst advice. <laughs> no, because they're still doing the match punishment, so we still got to pay for it. Too. Still, it's worth it, man, to be honest. <laughs> Make it as tough as – because you know – Mass punishment, it is what it is. It's a, it, it goes on until it stops, and then it's over. It's over. You just got to like deal. It, those, but when you're a fucking 17, 18 years old, it seems like that's going to last forever. You're like a, your it gets brain, in their head. Yeah, so you, yeah, they're fucking dumb. So I would be doing shit all the time. I would be fucking the class over all the time. <laughs> so glad you weren't with me. Because yeah. <laughs> I don't mind doing PT, so it's like, let's do it. Yeah. yeah, that was my attitude. When we we're getting fucking smoked and shit in base. I'm like, all right, fine, let's fucking do this. I guess false motivation, still motivation. Yeah. Right? Well, I wasn't even motivated. I just didn't care. Like, all right, <laughs> fine, we're g- I'm going to do push-ups so until I can't do them numb. anymore. And then what? what, what and else, then what? What's he going to do to me? Kick the shit out? No, he's not going to fight me. So, how bad could this really get? That's funny. But I was 24 when I went through. Okay. So yeah. I was a little older. I knew the world. I didn't. Right. You're in that nice in between. <clears throat> Yeah. Old enough to know a little bit more about yeah. life, but still, still young enough, your body can handle it. That yeah, was fun. <laughs> yeah, but I know even now, as out of shape as I am compared to then, I would fucking raise all sorts Just of hell. For the mental game. Holy shit! <laughs> That's Holy all it is, right? Shit. Yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah. So at, at thirty, you go back, um, and then when do you get deployed? Uh, two thousand three. Oh, two thousand three. Okay. Yeah. So two thousand one, I went back in. Uh, they didn't ship me. Some come, a couple of guys got to go to Afghanistan. They waited and to finally ship me out when they went to Iraq. Gotcha. So I did. Uh, I was eighty second airborne. Then I did Desert Storm with First Cav. Uh, Two thousand three, I was eighty second airborne. We did a year. I come back from that. I'm home ten months. During that ten months, I I moved bases. I go to Fort Carson, Colorado. I'm there three months. We deploy again. Two thousand five with third ACR for another thirteen months. Come back from that. And I got to go to school and go back to Fort Bragg, Daddy Second Airborne. Uh, deployed with them. I was out there three and a half weeks. That's 2007 now. So I'm on my fourth deployment when I got hit by the roadside bomb. Wait, when in 2007? I got hit April 7th, 2007. So they, they went out in August. So which unit were you Five seventy third. 573rd. Mm. So I was yeah. with uh, uh, 2325. We were in Solder City then. Okay. We got there in uh, January of '07, and Jared, Taylor, Derek White, we were all there together. Oh wow! Yeah. Right down the street from you guys. Yeah, because uh, we went over. And, they went over in July. Mm-hmm. I had just got there, so I still had dwell time <laughs> from the last deployment. So I July of 2006. You mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I when I finally went over in March, and in April got hit. Mm-hmm. Three and a half weeks later, we were actually helping out First Cav mm-hmm. in Bakuba or Bakuba. However you Bakuba. Want yeah, Bakuba is how everybody in the military said it back then, but Bakuba is how you yeah. actually say it. It's like uh, orientate. It's not a word, guy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, could you orientate yourself this way? No, because it's not a word. You start using words that are real, and I'll start doing actions that are real, my man. <laughs> yeah, anyway, how long were you in 325? Uh, for five years. So you were there? With, oh, five to ten. So, okay, so I was with them in 2003. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the, in the initial evasion, I was a 782nd, the main mm. support. I'm a driver, <clears throat> so I was doing the whole... Ramp up from Kuwait yeah. all up to Iraq. Baghdad with them. We, I built Fob Falcon mm. in South okay. Baghdad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and Crazy small world. It is. Yeah. It is, yeah. And if it's funny, everybody we have on the show um, who served during that time, I feel like it's like a Kevin Bacon stitch, like a six degrees. Like yeah. either you know him, Jared knows him, yeah. or <laughs> Derek or somebody. Derek or Well, I mean, so Crispy, yeah. Crispy Omar Avia was in uh, 126 just south of us. Yeah. Uh, I, I think they showed up a couple months after we did. And Jared left as RJ tack to go be theirs for a while right after uh, Omar got blown up, I think. So it was like a yeah. w- couple of weeks in between that situation. Yeah, so Omar we, and I were in the hospital together at the <clears> same <throat> time. Yep. Really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah like 2007 he, was he got blown worse. up a little bit after you, right? Yeah. Like a couple months maybe? Yeah, because really I think Jared left us in May. It was either April, late April or May, and he went to 126 with those guys. And it was right after... Right after Omar got blown up, I think. I don't remember. Yeah, it's a lot of foggy times. Yeah, I'm sure. <clears throat> uh, do, do you remember the circumstances and the day that... No, the only thing I remember was having a cup of coffee that morning. We were about to roll out the gate. I was taking lead. Uh, we had to wait for Captain Grassball. He was an S4 guy coming out to check all the supply routes. So he wanted to go out that day, and I remember waiting for him. That's the only reason when I knew I was the only survivor of the vehicle. 
So I knew when the other four guys died and then Captain Grassball was with us, like, okay, I could put together that day that I went and had an extra cup of coffee mm-hmm. at the coffee bean waiting for him to get out to the convoy so we can roll out. That's why I could put that together. And we left about, I think I was going to say 7 and 8 o'clock in the morning, and it happened about 5, 6 o'clock in the evening, and the whole day is like wiped out. Completely gone. <laughs> yeah, I woke up uh, in San Antonio. Uh, 72, it got me to San Antonio 72 hours. From the time That's I got fast. injured in 72 hours, they got me straight to San Antonio. I stopped in Longstool real quick, kept going, and then uh, it's like 11, 10, 11 days after I woke up from the coma. So when, when you wake up from the coma, which, what, are, what are your first thoughts? I don't remember a whole lot. I was in ICU. Uh, I remember complaining that I couldn't have water. Mm. <laughs> they won't give you any water. What you think? Water, water. What do they do? Drink water, do push-ups. Because uh, there's, there's no protein in it. So they want you drinking these protein sure shakes. Mm. Like I was... What about two hundred ten pounds? And when I got injured, <laughs> but went straight down to like one sixty from the injury that quick. Mm-hmm. And so you're giving all this protein and stuff. Uh, I heard horrible stories about me uh, putting nurses in headlocks and trying to escape and everything. I didn't know where I was for that first month. Really, the ketamine they keep you on makes you hallucinate. So you have no idea what's going on. You don't have to tell me about the effects of ketamine. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Special K puts you in a real weird headspace. Right. It's um, called a K-hole, and I'm... The K-hole. Spent yeah, a lot of time yeah. there. Yep. <laughs> Spent an entire summer there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah so I, but I'm sure the nurses and all that stuff are used to it, and they're cool with it. Like, right. Yeah. It's And I hear about this stuff later on. They're telling me what I did. I couldn't see. I had uh, goggles on. My eyelids are burnt so bad. They almost threw away the left eye. They weren't going to keep it. Oh, shit. Um, they were lucky they were able to save it, but beginning for a year and a half, I had to wear goggles with medicine in my eyes. Mm. So I knew everybody by their voice. I just listened to the radio on, on the, in the room. People watch TV. I just kind of listened. I could tell you what a doctor or nurse is walking down mm. the hallway by their voice. It was crazy. Man. Um, <laughs> when, when was the first like thought for you that, uh, all right, I can register what happened to me. I know where I am. And... I'm able to communicate with people and ask what's going on. Yeah, when, I first, when they first told me what's oh, happened, it's like, I just, okay, I'm injured. I didn't realize how bad it was. Mm-hmm. I was so out of it. My hand, I had my left hand at the time, it's all in this cast and all this stuff, and you know, stuff on my head, I don't even know what it is, I can't see what it is. I just, you know, I told my wife at the time, I said, hey, babe, you know, when they fix me, mm-hmm. I gotta go back to selection. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. I tried out for Special Forces 2004, I hurt my back, uh-huh. uh, then I was gonna try it out again, started getting in shape, working out better for it, I was gonna go back after this deployment. Like, yeah, I'm just, just going to fix me. No big deal. I'm going to go try out again. I'm going to go back and do what I do, do my duties. I had no did, idea did she, how bad it was. It's like, yeah, she just played along with it. Yeah, yeah, sure. If you, know, mm. if you feel like it, just let me go on with my little fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> I just didn't realize how bad it really was. And when, when did you, like, did they give you a mirror at some point and they say, hey, here's your new reality? Here's who you are. When, and- uh, I, first time I got up, I could only trust one nurse. And my wife had time to shave me. So I, was, I had to get up one time. She had to go back and get the kids out. They were here stationed in North Carolina still. She had to bring the kids to San Antonio. So I had to get them shave myself for the first time and clean my eyes out where I could see. Like I had to clean all the medicine out. And I saw my face. But again, I just thought, they're going to fix that. They're gonna, it's going to be back to normal. I didn't realize how bad it was. But luckily, I did such a great job. I came out better looking today. I don't know if you've seen pictures of me before. <laughs> I haven't, actually. <laughs> much better now. <laughs> At least I got a better excuse, right? Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then what's the recovery time for so for six, all your injuries? Six months in the hospital. Okay. Uh, 48 surgeries to date. <clears throat> and a three years total recovery. Shit. Because you, once you get through the surgeries, the skin grafts and stuff like that, I know, I know Crispy's had like 100 mm. skin grafts. He's, oh, I'm 38% yeah. of my body. Head was burnt to the skull, but he's, he's more, you know, his percentage, I don't know what it was, like 60, 70, 80, some yeah. craziness. Yeah. Uh, but it takes so long for those skin grafts to heal and everything. And then it was, do we take off his hand or not? And I'm like, take off my hand. I want to move on. So they waited two years, took my hand off. So then you got to wait for that and do all that therapy. So it took three years. Shit. Um, and after the, the three years is up, uh, how do you say to yourself, all right, I'm no longer in the military anymore. I can't obviously do any of right. that. <clears throat> what do I do with my life? At this point. Yeah, for that first year, it was really, really hard. Survivor's guilt. Um, I felt like a burden in my family. I'm like, why should I? I shouldn't be here. Every night I prayed that God would just take me. 
Like I should just be gone. It'd be easier for my family. They don't have to wait through another surgery if he's going to make that one. I could have got an infection in my head and just mm. done. They wouldn't be able to stop it. Mm -hmm. it was, I you can see it's so thin up there. And the skull's been shaved. The parts of that were too bad to regrow stuff mm. on it. it. Took 18 months just to get skin to grow on my head. So I was out of the hospital with no skin on my head walking around. Man, my uh, kids had to tell care of me. So I would throw, I mean, I would actually literally just go in when my kids went around, you know, I'd go in the bathroom, mm. look in the mirror and just cry or punch clothes and just be angry at everything. Mm. Of course, on a lot of medication at that time too. Yeah. yeah. Um, what was the reaction from your wife and kids? They were always really supportive. That's great. Really, really, really supportive. Uh, she took, my wife took care of me. You know, she had to do uh, eight hours of wound care every day. Also get the kids off to school and they were 15, eight and nine years old. So my oldest daughter stepped up and helped be one of the parents in the house. Got her driver's license early at uh, 15 years old. Mm -hmm. And she came the first ever military child of the year. So that's, really? Yeah, she, she just did amazing. Just stepped up. Ended up going to college for psychology, which only four years, which that mm, yeah. can't do a whole lot with. But, um, but now works at the Fisher House at San Antonio. Fort Sam. Really? So she's still doing the same stuff yeah. she did helping me. She started helping other families, and that's why she got the war. Because other people would go and need the surgeries. Now, I was, again, you know, I'm older. Yeah. The other ones are all younger, and they got babies. Mm -hmm. So she would stay at their house, watch their kids, take the kids to daycare while they go in for another surgery, go to, go to school herself in high school. And this is her fourth high school because <laughs> of the military moves mm -hmm. and the injury and everything. So she went to four different high schools, kept the 3.0 grade point average or higher, got into college, just... She's an amazing young lady. Very proud of her. That's amazing, man. And now today, still helping veterans with the mm. Fisher House Foundation. That's amazing. Um, and, and then, so you said you were married. Are you guys not together anymore? Yeah, we're not married anymore. Uh, we tried to work it out. I and mean, she was good. She helped me for many years and going through everything. But you, you know, you're married. Yeah. You know, the nagging, the yelling, the questioning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know about you, but I had enough third degree. Yeah. Like it was... <laughs> Yes, <laughs> that one got Dan. Um, That's just appreciation of my Yeah, face. it is. <laughs> it, <laughs> right. You'll never see Dan smile in this life. That is the best reaction you will ever him. get out of yes. Dan right there. Like, uh, you nailed it. That was good. You nailed it. Thank you. Um, who asked for the divorce? It was mutual. Okay. We uh, started talking. It, it just stopped communicating. It was all, it was, it, both sides. We got married at 22 years old. You start to grow apart anyways. There was problems even before the last deployment, you know, the military lifestyle and everything. So she never knew anything about that because you know, I was out for those 10 years. I got yeah. married when I was out and I was a civilian and I went back in. So to her and the kids, they didn't know what was going on. They didn't know what to expect. Gotcha. And, and I know that might seem like a weird question to the audience. I'm, uh, I'll tell you why I ask it. There was a, there was a guy and I'm not going to say his name. He's a, he's a friend of yours. We talked about it before we went mm -hmm. on air who is a burn victim <laughs> as well. Um, we got blown up overseas he got, he, this is what he said in a lie. He was like, dude, I got the most pussy I've ever gotten in my life <laughs> after my accident with yes. all the scars and everything. And yeah. he ended up getting divorced, but for different reasons. Right. He was just a fucking poon hound after that. And was just like, this is amazing. <laughs> and I've, I've never seen a guy. No, I, I and you know joke exactly about who that. I'm talking about. Right. I and I joke around about that because it's, it's happened. Like I got, once I got divorced, I was, you know, divorced for a couple of years is in my forties trying to figure it out again, dating all over again in my forties. And that was a, a lot different, you know? Yeah. 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 But it was easy. There's that's a conversational that's piece. exactly There's, what he said. Yeah. It's like, Descri wow, I should have burnt myself in high school. Forget the DJ job. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I should have played with matches. Describe that for people. Cause I, I was like, man, I wish I, I had told uh, our friend, I had said, look, I'd love for you to come on and tell these stories. He's like, no, I cannot tell those stories. And I was like, well, Dude, I don't think people understand because, you know, you like you're walking around today, yeah. right? And I, I one would assume most girls would be like, "Oh man, I not that guy." Yeah. It is the opposite. Like, yeah. It just well, a lot of times you get people like, pussy. "Oh, they feel, oh, do you want to come to our church? They think you're angry mm -hmm. or something." It's like, "No, I'm fine. I'm going to be okay." Yeah. But I think what it is, it's the confidence. You know, keep burping that that whopper was delicious. Um <laughs> but they they uh the confidence Mm -hmm. And again, I had the insecurity at first, but then as I started getting out there and talking to people, I was like, what do I have to hide? I got scars. I got tattoos. I look funny. I have Freddy Krueger, whatever. 
you just come more confident about yourself because like you can't really hide it. it's not like oh i'm gonna get up if i gotta fix my hair right because then i'll look better does it matter if i have a zit no so yeah <laughs> i think i stop worrying and just have more confidence in myself and i think that's what they're they're seeing is that confidence God, you that should make, write a self-help book that just tells people to set themselves on fire right yeah. <laughs> it's a great I guarantee weight loss plan half of hollywood would do it yeah if yeah, you're having trouble dating anyone yeah. here's here's what you do yeah, it's it's funny. Yeah, now the that book you of matches is a lot cheaper than that. That, that the Kia Coke, you know, it's a lot cheaper. Oh, yeah. It's quicker. Yeah. yeah, or getting a or getting a great job and being rich, like yeah, you just burn, burn, burn up. You're good. Collect insurance. Now that you said it, I'm, I'm thinking back to it. Like, yes, that makes total sense. Like, our friend is the most confident motherfucker on the planet, and yeah, man, he's burns <laughs> like, you know. To you're out there. Your, like, your Yo. dignity was gone in the hospital. You know, one time, you know, they come to a bed check because you're laying in the hospital so long to make sure you don't have sores. Mm. <clears throat> so it's an LVN, and my sister's sitting there, and I hear the nurse walk in. The RN walks in. I'm in the bathroom. And they're like, where's Bobby? Where's Bobby? Oh, he's in the bathroom by himself. Yay! You know, they all start clapping, like, yeah, he's going to the bathroom by himself for the first time. And I, then I, I, I read the nurse. She's like, well, don't come out fully dressed. You know, I got to do bed checks, you know, check for sores. You didn't wear nothing but that backward ass gown and some boxers, anyways. Mm. So I just came out with my boxers around my ankles. Like, is this good enough? Yeah. Like, you just don't care anymore. My sister, the LVN, doesn't matter. Mm. You know, and especially at the burn unit at Fort Sam Houston, because that's where they train all the medics. So, guess what the medics get to do? They get to come mm. through. You get these 18 year old kids that get to come through the burn unit. And guess who's going to shower you? Here are these two 18 year old boys who are going to take you to your shower today. Gee, thanks. Yeah. I would, <laughs> yeah. I would do everything I could to make them as uncomfortable as possible. <laughs> Dan's just going to burn himself to fuck with people. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I might. I mean, look, everything I have planned in life, including my suicide, is going to be, there's going to be an element of trolling involved. <laughs> we have this, we have a, a laundry list of different potentialities for me. Yeah. Like one of them showing up to a surprise birthday party and all my friends are there. And I'm just like, oh, I'm glad you're all here. Bam, just right in front of everybody. <laughs> surprise! All over, the, yeah, all over the cake, like a white cake. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah, you got to get tiered white yeah. cake and then blood yeah. all over Wedding it. cake. The Today Show. The um, Today Show, I clack off a vest right behind them. Like I'm knocking on the window until they turn around and look at me. And then finally, I'm like, <laughs> boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, you got to get on Jeopardy. No, that's oh. not the timer. <laughs> <laughs> that's not the buzzer. Yeah. And at the end, you're just, Deep. that's it. You Boom. keep pressing the button, and he's like, sir, relax with the button. I'm like, oh, wrong button. And I pull the one off my desk. <laughs> and then you explode all over Trebek's got pancreatic cancer anyway. He's not going to be around that much longer. No. Yeah, he'll probably help you out with it. He might, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I assume that's painful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> one would think. Well, yeah. you think so. Yeah, Trebek's been pretty honest about his shit, though. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, what are you going to do, though? And that's sell, just it. What are you going to do? Sell reverse mortgages, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> sell reverse mortgage. <laughs> Every time I see that commercial, <laughs> nice. I'm like, hey, man, you're probably the last guy that should be telling you this. Like, right. <laughs> like a guy who reminds you of impending death. Yeah, right, right there. Probably oh, not reverse the best mortgage. Don't worry about it. Yeah. yeah, you're going to live forever. Yeah. Same as me. You're like, no, <laughs> right. no, Alec. No, I, no, you'll be dead in two weeks, bro. Yeah, it's, he, <laughs> uh, does, he does not have much time left. So I guess what we've decided is that Alex Trebek is probably suicidal. Yep. Yeah. So if any it has you, to cross his If mind. any of you know Alex Trebek, reach out to him. Make sure he's doing okay. No, you know, it's funny. He just did 60 Minutes. and Maybe try and cure cancer or something. I don't know. Yeah. He was just <laughs> like, you know, I love Jeopardy and I'm going to keep doing it. And that's, that's it. And I, the wife was the one who was just like, hey, man, let's dial it back. Because they have his replacement. <laughs> so yeah, the guy exists. Uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, Speaking of replacements, uh, Robert Pattinson's playing Batman? Yes. Yes, oh. he is. You're welcome for that. <laughs> <laughs> They're just trying to. That whole DC world yeah. what, what is, is it? What to. is it? What, what's, the, what's the angle there exactly? Uh, they want to go younger, and they want somebody who's interested in it. And uh, Is it like a prequel kind of story? or No. I think it's just Batman again, you know, and with, with all this shit. What new story could you tell at this point? I, exactly. And it's like we're on your, your, your 90th Batman yeah. Um, I think they want somebody who's interested. Ben Affleck was just not. He saw the first movie. Mm. He really wanted to be Batman, and then saw the first movie, and was just like, "This, this fucking sucks." Yeah, and uh, I want out of this. <clears throat> he was trying everything he could to get well, out. Well, his of movie was better than some of the other Batman movies, but there's no appetite for that kind of movie. Like a superhero movie has to be a little bit sad, but mostly campy, and everybody wins at the end. But yeah, DC is a darker universe than Marvel is. Yeah, and. Uh, I just don't think people like that shit. Christian Bale was rad. He, I mean, he was great. Yeah. 
those movies are really good. I think a lot of people bitched about Christopher Nolan's depiction. I thought it was really good. I loved it. Uh, it was, I, and I'm yeah. not a comic book guy. Uh, shit, we get some sponsors. I we just keep rapping, dude. And we get some <laughs> yeah. sponsors to pay for this whole shit wagon to be on the air. First and foremost, GhostBed.com forward slash Drinking Bros. Twenty five percent off everything in the entire store. Sheets, pillows, mattresses, adjustable bases, you name it, everything is 25% off at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. And as always, the 36 month pay as you go program and no interest still works with all of it. Knocks that mattress down to like 20 bucks a month. Uh, you can't beat it. It's the, it's the finest in the land. Dan and I have had it for, uh, we've had ghost beds for years and years at this point. Uh, I didn't, we years, didn't get it 25% yeah. off though. What the fuck? Not back then, no the fuck bro uh it's going on all the way through february so go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today and, and jump on these deals dude they're they're the best in the biz uh next up d'anthony who we got uh we've got vincero vincero watches.com yeah. uh vincero watches.com um i look i'm wearing i'm wearing mine now I, so we've talked about this on the last couple episodes, but yeah. uh, it's amazing. This is the blue steel right now. I'm going to hold this up to camera. Uh, if you're not subscribed to Drinking Bros Podcast on YouTube, you should be. Um, these are affordable watches that are amazing. Watches and sunglasses are the two things that are the, the highest markups for products out there. And uh, it's fucking bullshit. There's no reason yeah. to charge you 5K for a watch. This is the same quality um, as everything else, and it is affordable. Um, especially if you use the promo code Drinking Bros. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. What are we getting? Fifteen percent off there. Yep. At VinceroWatches.com. Uh, free shipping as well. God damn right. And this watch is heavy as shit. So That's, free shipping <laughs> matters. It does. Yeah. It's V I N C E R O Watches dot com. Yes. Vincero Watches. Vincero Watches dot com. Uh, Dan, you can get. Uh, you've got the rubber gripped one. Um, yeah, you know, I said on a show last week. I think what the what the model the is. rose colored rogue. model rogue is the yeah, yeah yeah, yeah. Um, it's rose gold yours is dope mine's the blue steel uh i like the fucking metal dude i like the i like to feel like a little tiny king going i don't wear metal here. watches i wear either this one or a fucking apple watch with the silicone band yeah because you're you're always prepared to run away um from something yeah. uh yeah i don't I, I travel light if that's what you're saying yeah yeah, yeah you travel yeah. light. i don't i'm heavy as shit that's dude it. i'm in my, i'm in one spot boom you can find me. You know where to find me. I've got a gun and a desalinator. Yep. I've got a, I've got a gift time. card to Chipotle and a <laughs> watch from VinceroWatches.com. Use the promo code Drinking Bros for 15% off. Last but not least, Anthony, who is it? Uh, Kill Cliff. Goddamn right it is. KillCliffCBD.com. I'm drinking the uh, pre-workout right now. You do, you do uh, CBD by me? I do not. Really? I haven't tried it. No shits. Yeah. Uh, you can take some cans with you, man. There we go. Kill Cliff CBD has got 25 milligrams of CBD in it. Yeah, that's good. And uh, you will not test positive for it. We have 80% uh, of our audience <laughs> is military and first responder. By the way, thanks for listening. We're up over 8 million listeners now a month, which yeah. is nice. fucking insane. Um, Somebody actually DM'd me yesterday and asked me, they're like, hey, I just bought a case of this. I'm not going to piss hot for this, am I? No. <laughs> you, won't. You, won't. you won't. And we actually have the guys from Kill Cliff on, uh, I think, the week after next. Um, to talk about it, uh, KillCliffCBD.com is the best in the biz. Promo code Drinking Bros gets you 20% off and free shipping. Uh, knocks that case down to like, uh, knocks a can down to like 380, 390 a can, which is cheaper than a can of Monster and all that other bullshit, except you get 25 milligrams of CBD in it. It tastes amazing. And somebody got like 15 calories, no carbs, no sugars. It's awesome, man. Uh, and for drinking on a Saturday, uh, mix that with vodka and then just enjoy your life. When we were at the Army Navy nice. game, they had a full bar and they were making Kill Cliff CBD with vodka. That bar was packed. It was absolutely packed. It's giving um, me some great ideas for tonight. Goddamn right. Uh, yeah. Go to killcliffcbd.com. Uh, use the promo code Drinking Bros. 20% off. <laughs> um, did, they did they give you an award or anything? Like, what, what happens? Uh, when you have injuries like this, do they give you something? I mean, you know, the good old Purple Heart. Uh, is, yeah. yeah. But uh, there was nothing. I didn't do anything spectacular. We rolled over a bomb, got blown up. Yeah, I, I was. Wondering... <laughs> I messed up on the job, and now I'm an inspiration. Yeah, yeah. That's I, how it works that, in America. And that's what, exactly. <laughs> that, that's what I was kind of alluding to, yeah. where everybody on the show, like we, we had Dakota Meyer on last week. And, yeah. Um, you know, he, he was saying, look, the Medal of Honor is not what you think it is to me. Like, it's a burden, and I feel a lot of guilt and a lot of shame for it um, because 
all my friends died. And I would imagine with you and the Purple Heart, it's probably the same thing where you're like, man, (laughs) I was the only one that lived. Yeah, there's a lot of guilt with having good things in life, having a good life. I have a good life now. Um, And it took me a while to really get used to that and to deal with it. And there's times you still go back and you think about why I don't deserve this. I shouldn't have this. I should be dead, all that stuff. But like I remind myself and I like to remind, you know, other guys and gals that have been out there, lost friends and colleagues and stuff is just think about it. if you were the one that didn't make it home, what would you want for mm-hmm. the ones that did? Of course, you don't want to die in vain. You want them to live their life to the fullest and, and chase their dreams and that American dream you just fought for. Go ahead and go out there and make a difference. Keep going. Keep yeah. serving. Yeah, man, it's uh it's tough. And again, after talking to Dakota and Crispy and, you know, everybody else who's been on the show, like um, your outlook is unbelievably positive when, you know, to most people, again, like you were saying, yeah. like, they look at you like, oh, are you okay? Do right. you need anything? Or... And that's what kind of woke me up in the beginning. It's like, well, what can I do? After that first year of praying to God to die every night, um, I started getting my independence back and everything like that. So I was like, okay, now why am I here then? Is there a reason I'm here? What am I supposed to do now? Uh, every case of being patient, be patient. And it was just shortly after that where I started looking at the brighter side and saying, all right, at least I'm here to see my children grow up. Someday I'm going to get to hold my grandchildren. That's enough for me right there. You know, that's all mm-hmm. I really need. Um, but that did, it did a story. They came to the hospital to see how we were being treated. Uh, NPR did it. Mm-hmm. Because that all the stuff with Walter Reed was going on and, oh, they're being you know, mistreated. And that was just an old hospital that wasn't ready for that many injuries. Really, as I believe that was. So they came to San Antonio and said, we're being treated. I was being positive. Like, hey, yeah, I got burnt. You know, I had to finally turn that, that leaf in that corner. And then they posted that story on NPR. And I was checking it out. And I saw people's comments. They said they couldn't fathom going through something like that and coming out positive on the other end. Yeah. And so that's when I, oh, okay. So if I keep chasing my dreams, if I keep being positive, and that's an example for my children, but also for other people, I can be a reminder of how bad life really can be. We all need reminders. I've learned that over the years for sure. Sometimes I'm the reminder. Sometimes I need to be reminded. Yeah. You know, a great example, Crispy. Mm-hmm. Um, first, his start with his toes, then his foot, then the rest of his leg. If you look at his hands, my one good hand is better than both his hands. Yeah. But to stop him, no, he's out there hunting, gutting, fishing. I mean, he does everything. Oh, dude. He's he figures out a way to do it. Killing gators, for yeah. Christ's sakes. Like, he's always inviting me gator gator hunting, you know? Yeah. Uh, that Crispy lives life to the fullest at does. all times. Exactly. And that's, a, that's the best way you can live for the ones that we lost. To honor and respect them is to live your life to the fullest. Yeah. What was the decision to get into <laughs> comedy? When did, when did that come? <laughs> comedy started because, I mean, obviously we all have a dark sense of humor. Mm-hmm. And not at all as dark as Dan's, but yeah, Jesus Christ! <laughs> yeah, you don't want to touch it. You'll have to wash your hands afterwards. So yeah. Whole another whole another therapy session after that. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> my therapists all keep killing themselves, and I don't know why. <laughs> I don't think it's there's my, a link here somewhere. I don't think yeah. it's me. <laughs> the serial killer patient. It's, there's a whole story. I'm not there. a serial yeah. killer per se, on purpose. Not on. Well, not, not on yet. Purpose. No, I'm. Uh, I'm a principled sociopath. It's not the same thing. <laughs> okay. Uh, th- describe the description. Like I want to know <laughs> a little now. more detail. Yeah. On a that. principal sociopath doesn't experience uh, uh, any kind of emotional attachment to the rules or the rule of law or social stuff at all, but they understand the need for it and act accordingly. You understand? Sure. Yes. That's it. So okay. a principal sociopath is someone that I've been watching Dexter. That's yeah, he's playing, that's, right? a, that's a decent, I just finally caught I mean, on to that show. Obviously, that's a crazy example of it, but right. that is an example of what it might look like in real life. But how he tries to rules, he has to act like yeah, he yeah. understands what a friendship is. And yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah, Have you finished Dexter? No, I'm only three seasons. I'm on third season right uh, now. I really just started. I binged the two me seasons. Do you want to save you? I, I, I got about another season. Have you heard? It. No. How it ends? I know. I don't know anything. Oof. Uh, I, so here's the Dexter debate we always have yeah. whenever somebody brings up Dexter on the show. Uh, and, and when I say debate, I mean debate amongst friends of whether how close you feel to someone to tell them, do not waste the rest of your time, time on that show. I'm going to watch <laughs> the rest of it. I think I stopped at the end of season four. I'm going to watch the rest of it tonight because I don't give a shit if it's good or not. Well, here's the thing. So it, Dexter is great. Well, right? with it has the worst finale. And, and this is voted on universally across the board. It is the worst finale to, to, to tie up a show in the history of TV. In my, I thought in it my was opinion. Eight Simple Rules of Dating My Teenage Daughter. Well, which one was that? What was the ending of that? 
It's the one where fucking homeboy from uh, Three's Company dies or whatever the fuck. Well, they replaced him. So the show kept going. Yeah, it sucked after that. Yeah, but right. that wasn't the end. This was the end. No, the end like, sucked because he died. Yeah, but he didn't <laughs> die at the end of the show. No. Yeah, that should have been the end of the show. It should have, but it yeah. wasn't. Same with Dexter. Dexter should have stopped at a certain point and didn't. It kept going. And then the way they wrapped it up, you were like, fuck you. And I felt that way about How I Met Your Mother as well, where I was just like, come yeah, on. I mean, how do you wrap that up? I mean, I know you've seen it, but how do you wrap that You'll up? See, Dexter I think Dexter has to, to die. Right? He has to die or go to prison forever. Yeah. One of those two things. Yeah. So, eh. and, well, I think he's got to go to prison because maybe he'll come back. <laughs> yeah. Give yeah. it a give it a go, Z. Well, I will. I, I'll be. I'm going to be so high this weekend. I probably won't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I won't know what's going. Give on. Give it anyways. a go and and let me know. I'm going to order a couple of pizzas. Uh, by the way, Papa John, you fucking lying piece of shit. <laughs> what? He said ah. he was going to eat 40 pizzas in 30 days, and then he amended his statement after the fact because people were calling him out. He was like, actually, I just had pizza for 40 or 30 straight days. I had 40 pizzas for 30 straight days. Yeah. Like I ate some of each pizza, 40 of them. For thir- you took what you ate two slices of pizza a day, bitch. That's it. <laughs> I eat that every single day. Yeah, of my life. That's uh, even if I don't need it. The the papa is a piece of shit. He is a human fucking piece of garbage. That's why it's like audible, right? Yeah, like, you know, Papa you, John. Papa John is audible. You can yeah. change. <laughs> can you imagine like building a huge estate and then deciding to put a a moat around it? Honestly. <laughs> What do you got? Fucking uh, gators. That's what happens to people. Or fucking, right. yeah, yeah, mo- like Mongolians are trying to storm the Great Wall there. You got to build a fucking moat, you piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, like like when you look back at your injuries and everything, yeah. do you ever look in the mirror and say, why didn't this happen to Papa John? <laughs> right. <laughs> why didn't it happen to that piece of shit? I'm going to burn. Of yeah. <laughs> no, because then he would have got laid. It's, uh, you can't it's true. Lay- Pizza guy doesn't get laid, does he? Yes, he I does. I mean, he's a billionaire. Billionaire, so. and um, like they've got him without paying for it, though. So here's here's what, what like, difference does that make? Well, you pay for it one way or another, don't you? Yes. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You paid for it dearly. <laughs> they've caught him fucking seventeen year olds offering seventeen year olds coke. Um, Which state? <laughs> Utah. It's legal, brother. Is it? Yeah. That's funny. So some, uh, I think some, so. let me check on that before. I, <laughs> yeah. I don't want the, the coke or the seventeen year old. Which the, one's legal? Dan's <laughs> high as shit, and he's just giving out. No, I don't. I don't want anybody. Yes, that aren't true. It's uh, age seventeen or younger or not. Some dude just jumped no, his it car is, and goes to high school right now. It's eighteen in Utah. Excuse ah, me. there it is. So, so wait a year. We've heard some from the we have a bunch of. Uh, how do I say? first responders? I'm not going to say what it is. Who have said, "Hey, man." <laughs> The Papa was popped in uh, Utah numerous times for this. And yeah, it must have been the AMT guys. He magically got his way out of it. <laughs> Look, there's no uh, body in this room that hasn't offered cocaine to a 17-year-old in exchange for sex. <laughs> <laughs> but not at 40. You're, you're doing, you're doing math now, and math comes math. from China, and they're all dying. So I don't really give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> all right. well, they, were, they were multiplying too much, so we had to figure out a way to yeah. knock down the numbers. Yeah. yeah. Are you telling any coronavirus jokes in your set? No, right now? I don't have any coronavirus. I was just, just walk out on stage and say you've got it. And this is what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I'm contagious. Yeah. <laughs> and then you just you yeah. spit spit up uh, <laughs> running down soda. the audience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, how long have you been doing stand up comedy? Uh, ten years now. Shit, really? I got talked into by my occupational therapist when I. Chopped off my hand. We started doing all the therapy with mm-hmm. all the prosthetic arms and stuff. It, it, we joked around about it. You know, like I said, we had that six inch humor. So I would joke around to other guys. It's how I dealt with all the pain with the therapy mm-hmm. and everything. Yeah. Like oh, one guy was walking for the first time, blowing up, both legs gone above the knee. Walks for the first time, you know, holding on the bars. That's like seven steps. His family's there. We're all there. It's like, yeah, this is awesome, you know? And they're like, well, how do you feel? And he said, well, half of me feels like, <laughs> like, bro, you can't say that anymore. <laughs> Technically, that's like all of you. <laughs> that's like me saying, on the other hand, yeah, yeah, you know, it's doing those stupid jokes like that. Yeah, she said, yeah. She's like, you got to do comedy. You got to do it. So I, 10 years ago, I went to prove her wrong. I was in L.A. Mm-hmm. going out to see a doctor out there at UCLA for Operation Men that helps the, the wounded guys. Oh, yeah. 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 So I was going to my consultation for that. And she's like, you got to try stand-up comedy. You're going out there. You got to do it. So I, I, I pinky swore with her <laughs> that I would try it. With which hand? <laughs> with my giant pinky <laughs> the, the giant pinky hand. that's what that is so you feel real classy just hold that thing in the air and then sip the tea with the other hand yes it's yeah. very fancy <laughs> pinky is a little bit bigger than yours I don't know if you noticed with the tinted windows mm-hmm. right if you pull up at a stoplight and you slowly roll down like there's some chick sitting next mm-hmm. to me in a car and I roll <laughs> that window down real slow 
and they slowly the window comes out. That's all they see in my face. That's really funny. <laughs> You She's should like, do pull over. You should do that to cops. You should get like a fake cell phone and just like tape it to your fucking nub. And then oh, when they try to pull you over, just throw it down on the ground and be like, uh, "Yeah, I definitely wasn't holding a phone, officer. Yeah. <laughs> I could leave it there and it's hands free. Like, it's better than <laughs> Kiss my ass." <laughs> Especially in California, <laughs> they pull you over for that all the time. Oh, yeah. for, for, you, I would even at stoplights. They don't care. You're not even driving. They can stop like you're in your car. Yeah. Like, yep. Behind the wheel. Bunch of bitches. Let me ask a question that everybody really wants an answer to. You. And that yes, is, the carpet matches the drapes. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, is important as well. <laughs> but more important than that, have you used that thing as a sex toy yet? There Ooh. has been offers, but I have not. Gone there because that scares me. I mean, what use am I going to be after that? We asked Derek White of this. You still got the thing. Yeah, we asked Derek White too, and I was yeah. like, "Hey, man, have you ever?" His knob's know, too big, though. It's, it's, oh, yeah, it's too leg. big. But there is girls who have asked for that. Yes, there. I mean, I've went to a strip club one time. She just grabs it and shoves it up against it, and I was like, "Okay." I mean, it's not going to do much for like you, now. yeah, uh, except for give you herpes. But uh, right, you know, how do I fall? I mean, I got small, medium, and large now. Yes. <laughs> I got to go in reverse order. You know, I, sure. I, I think at this point in your life, you should do it. You should go all in. Because right, that's really not, that's not cheating. No. It's just like, no, hey, that's, she, her just giving her a fell hand down on my nub. There's nothing I can do about it. You could just spin her like a fucking basketball. They call me Nubalicious. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that would be yeah. a nice. Maybe t-shirts like. A nice in, gift. Notorious N-U-B. Ah, oh, Like great. a little stripper pole on it. It's, <laughs> that's, that's not a bad There's idea. something there. <laughs> on, I'm, we're recording on Valentine's Day, too. Yeah, it's Valentine's Day. Yeah. I nub you. I'm sure you've gotten that a lot. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Nub you. We do that. It's definitely a thing. Of course. Uh, always. What is, um, you know, once you go cooked, you're hooked. Mm. Is what I tell them. Oh, ladies. shit. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I like that. Things you know, that wonder. rhyme are true. It's true. It is. <laughs> a lot of people don't know that about the English language. A lot of people don't know that. <laughs> Even well, if it's not true prior to that. Right. It making, now becomes true. Uh, like the word selfie true. becomes a word. <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> That's it's genuinely how, it how it is these days. We gotta do True. it. Is what was the first uh, comedy club you did in LA? Comedy store. No shit. That's it, a that's a it's open mic, you know. So but you, that's still like the biggest place cool. you can do. Yeah, comedy in Los Angeles. How nervous were you? Well, that's the thing. Everybody always asks that. Is it's wherever I go, I get stared at. It's quiet, and I can walk through Walmart, and people are just staring at me. It's quiet. If I bombed on stage, first of all, it wouldn't be the worst bomb I've ever been through. Nailed it. Two. It's quiet and people are staring at me. So it's just like I'm in, I mean, it's nothing different. Yeah. So I really didn't have anything to lose. So I went up there, uh, stepped in another hand. I, I pulled that one too far from the barrel. <laughs> Dan did not approve. <laughs> um, but I went, I, and you know, you do, you know, done comedy for, you know, you get that little light in the back of the room. They give you three minutes, there's open mic, and mm -hmm. the light comes on, you got a minute left. And yeah. so I did two minutes of material that I'd wrote, written, but I didn't write about being wounded. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to tell him a veteran. I just told him it's a rare birth defect was my joke. It was the first one I wrote. That's funny. That my mother had to work in the circus through her pregnancy mm -hmm. as a fire eater. And that's how uh, I got burnt, you know? So I do that joke off, off of that is the first thing I wrote. But I only had two minutes worth of jokes. And a light came on. I was like, what do I do now? But in ninth grade, <laughs> I wrote a rap about being constipated. Uh huh. So then I just luckily remembered that. And that filled in another 30 seconds that I walked off the stage with nobody laughing. So, so you go up and essentially bomb. Yes. Yeah, your first time yeah. up. But what I found out was at these open mics, they're all other comedians waiting for their turn. Mm -hmm. So they don't care. They're either analyzing your joke going, where's he going with this? What would I say? Mm -hmm. Or they're working on their material. Mm -hmm. So they're not even really listening. But one of them gave me a compliment afterwards. She said, I like the part you said about this acid reflex. And I said, oh, okay. I didn't realize that was a joke. It's a little thing I added at the end. Went back to San Antonio and it was good for me it felt good just to get it out and make fun of it and laugh and, and do that so i started going open mic three nights a week at uh, lol Antonio. or something yeah four lol was open it's the river center comedy mm -hmm. club uh same owners open up opening lol yeah. later on yeah so that's where i just started doing three nights a week and next thing you know they're like hey do you want to host this show do you want to do this and the comedy just started growing that's amazing how I, and how fast for you were doing longer sets um it's probably a couple years um it was two years later when i got asked to do comedy warriors now, I don't know if you've ever seen that. Six, yeah. Five wounded combat vets uh, that's doing stand-up comedy. Now, the other four veterans had never tried it. Mm. When that blast <laughs> came out, uh, I think Wounded Warrior put it out and said, hey, does anybody want to be a comic? And I've already been doing it two years. It's like, shit, I need all the help I get. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so I signed up for that, got picked. Um, so I think that was my longest. When I started doing that, 
as they're doing 10, 15 minutes. Um, so that was I mean, the first time I did 10 minutes. I was so nervous. Like, that's I'm sure it's, it's a lot of crazy. time to fill, and it doesn't sound like it. No, so when people are like, oh, 10 minutes, mm-hmm. you're like, no oh, big great, deal. no big deal. Yeah. When you're up there, 10 minutes is a long time. Yeah. Just trying to write the three to five minutes, trying to come up with new materials, like, always a pain. Yeah. And then it was a lot easier because you were just, everything was new. And then now it's like, oh, I try to, I'm doing this and doing that. I got to go here and I got time to sit down and write and try to think new stuff. I'm always putting stuff on my phone. Like today I was driving here and stuff pops in my head when, when, in, when it's not convenient. That's mm-hmm. when stuff pops in your head. Of course. <laughs> yeah. So I'm driving down the road. Um, I can't text and drive. So I just did speak things. So I just put some notes in there. And it's like, and since I was driving here today, uh, I date my, my fiance's older. Mm-hmm. She's 11 years older than me, so I talk about dating. Whoa, 11 her, years? 11 years. You're 49? Yeah, I'll be 49. She's, she's going to be 60 in April. Her Whoa. birthday's the same day as my live day. No shit. Yeah. That's how we started working together. She actually, she was the CEO of a mental health company in Kentucky. Okay. Uh, so she hired me to come speak at one of her conventions. And so that's how I met her. And she said, well, I don't know if I want to work with me or not, but I can help you with the business side of everything. She was already helping another speaker. <clears throat> So I found out her birthday was the same day as my live day. So we're supposed to work together. So if we start working together, she traveled with me. Uh, we met other veterans that had the same problem. The problem is I didn't know how to ask for money. I didn't know how to do mm-hmm. the business side of it. It's like, I just want to make a difference. So we started a military speakers bureau called Bravo 748. You know, we have all veteran speakers. So we, we do the business side. Well, she does. She does all the work. I'm just a pretty face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, she retired from her other job and she just does the speakers bureau now. And then just the bookings. Um, we got Tig from Benghazi, you know. Mm-hmm. John yeah. Tegan's one of our speakers. Uh, Nate Boyer is one of our speakers. <laughs> oh, shit. We know Nate. So, uh, Nate was in uh, Range 15 as well. Yeah. 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 So we got there's a lot of these speakers. They, they wanted to speak, and they come out, and you know, they got other or bureaus too, but we're one of them. That, but we're the only veteran, all veteran speakers bureau. That's amazing. So um, trying to help them with that part of it. And now you're traveling from town to town, so you're, you're doing stand-up here, right? I'm doing stand-up here tomorrow at Dallin Hall uh, with Skippy and uh, Joe Cash now, also from Comedy Warriors. Um, That's a big hall. Cr- I just stopped by today. Um, it's crazy, to check right? it out. Yeah, I took a little picture of the poster. Like, oh, look, I'm cool. Is that the cool. one on yeah. UNCW's campus? The courthouse. Uh, downtown. Right? Oh, okay. Backside yeah. of the courthouse. Yeah, yeah. There, isn't it, right? Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. It's a big, that's a big spot. So it's going to be fun, exciting. Yeah, I did a tour with uh, Joe Skippy, and I did a tour in Colorado last October. So that was fun. I just toured all around Colorado doing some shows together. That's great. Doing a lot of motivational speaking stuff. To keep busy with that. And in fact, um, what's the 28th, 28, 28, 29th, and the 1st uh, of March, um, I'll be in Fayetteville. Oh, shit. All-American Tattoo Convention. Hell yeah. Found out it's the largest tattoo convention, our third largest in the mm-hmm. States. And that, that makes sense, Fort Bragg. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Um, they invited me out. I have a nonprofit now called Forging Forward. And it's my nonprofit is going to take, uh, we're building it, it's still new, but we want to do retreats with veterans, first responders, and Gold Star families to teach them outlets. Because that's what I learned. What helped me? The comedy helped me. Um, writing poetry helped me because it all came true when I made it rhyme. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Just like dancers. But, but all those things, whether it's fishing, learning something to do, <laughs> uh, take those demons we talk about and craft it into something. Um, so I want to teach them how to forge, uh, the introduction of welding, uh, how to paint. You know, Derek Wida, he does uh, mm-hmm. a lot of painting. Yep. You yep. know, so I would love to like, bring Derek out, teach some other veterans how to paint. You know, just get that outlet and that camaraderie together and give them something so when they're alone, that they can turn to that outlet and say, all right, I'm feeling this right now. I have no one else to call right now. I can feel alone. Let me just express myself this way and get it out. Yeah. That's what's helped me over the years. So I, I want to show them that, teach them that. That's great. Uh, yeah. Derek's an excellent painter, by the way. He is. Yeah, he's very good. Yeah. He's always been an artist. I mean, even when we, back in the day when he was like 19 years old, he was always drawing shit with a Sharpie. But it wasn't really like... It was emo shit. Yeah. yeah. And now he's painting six packs of ads on himself. Yeah. Is that real, right? No, they're real. Damn it. <sighs> yeah. It's crazy too, man. Because every time we get <laughs> he's together. He's always been a stud since he was a child. Ever since I've, well, not a child. Since he was like 18 since I met him. Yeah, like he has the babies. He relaxed for a little bit. He's like, all right, time to get back in shape. It's like a week later, they're back. Yeah. That's what it it's, feels like. Right. Yeah. And whenever we're together, we house like 80 beers. And I'm like, dude. How do you have a six pack still? Like, because it works out it. four goddamn hours a day. That's how. I guess, man, but it's still a lot. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It's a lot. It's crazy. Uh, now's the point in the show where we get to the drinking bro of the week, which is somebody who's inspired you or helped you along the way to to get you uh, where you are in this life. Uh, it can be a man <laughs> or a woman. Um, who is someone 
who has uh, been an inspirational figure in your life? My godmother, uh, great aunt godmother, Aunt Marie. She had a tumor when she was younger. I mean, she looked like a Marilyn Monroe, just beautiful. And young age in her 20s, she got married, had a tumor. It deformed her face. She had to put drops in her eyes. Her mouth hung open. So like at Thanksgiving, no one wanted to sit by her. Mm -hmm. You know, it was that the kids, you know, we were kind of creeped out about it. But she just kept going in public, kept going to church, just being her. Like to her, it was just normal. And I didn't realize it back then, how it would affect me later, obviously. Mm -hmm. But uh, when I got injured, (laughs) here she is, my godmother. And then I turn out. I need drops in my eyes. I can't close my mouth. Though. Like I resemble her a lot in a ways with, with those deformities. And while I was healing, she passed away. I never got a chance to go tell her how she's helped me through my recovery in the beginning. I, I was just gotten out of the hospital. I still was active duty. I had to put in for leave. She got sick. And I got there the day after she passed to be there for her services. But I really want to tell her in the hospital just like, you're going to help me through this. I know because you've been strong all these years, I'm going to be able to do this. Man, uh, what a crazy story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, that's amazing. <clears throat> Cheers. Cheers. Um, last question, I guess. Somebody, you, you've had to have been approached for somebody to make a movie about your life, I would imagine, right? There's been talks about books and stories. and So it's all in play and thinking about it. I'm kind of lazy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to put together a poetry book. Uh, I've, I've probably got like 40, 40 poems that I want to put together. I got 20 of them picked aside right now, kind of a, a table book just to motivate people, some inspire them, some with photos that go along with it light, love, and demons. I want to talk about the light that my faith that guided me um, when I got injured. I used to be atheist, saw a whole new light, whole new meaning. Um, uh, talk about the demons that, that I go through in the battle when I write about and talk about those dirty sex things we think about every day too, man, being submissive and taking Caitlyn Jenner, whatever we got to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. of course. Look, we're not right there. Oh. trying to bang her. I just want to see it. Oh. oh, yeah, he just wants to see it. Well, that's the first step. Yeah, and then after that is... You don't know what's going to It's happen. a slippery slope, although she can't self-lubricate. Yeah. So it's not that slippery. It's not, yeah, obviously. That's called comedy. Obviously. <laughs> What, let me ask you, what's the, uh, if, if your buddy came up and said, I, I fucked her, right? I don't care about Does that. he win? No, 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 but does he win? Win what? What are we winning? Like, I, you can't top that, I think. As a fucked up story? I yeah. Mean, because of the confluence of the weirdness of the situation plus the level of fame, I don't think you could beat that story. Unless you drugged and raped Bill Cosby. Ah. <laughs> then it would be like, <laughs> oof. Yeah, you you, you, might win. you did or, it with pudding too. You, yeah, you hate slip something. Just with dump Jello on his back oh. <laughs> after you're done. <laughs> oh God! You just throw a pudding pop on his yeah. back. <laughs> you lick it once. You lick it once so it sticks. Yeah, because there's nothing like that stick to a skin. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like you know exactly what that feels. You like. You know what that feels like on your back. Oh yeah. Speaking of uh, tight quarters of. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that too. Speaking of shit bags, you see that Michael Avenatti got. Uh, he's convicted on all charges. I have. Is that breaking news right yeah. now? No shit. No. That's How the many? porn lawyer, by the way, <laughs> that tried to blackmail Nike, and he got lit the fuck up. He's going to do some he tried serious to jail time. Blackmail Trump too. Um, for like, well, for I don't know what the one with I don't know the details of the one with Trump, but the one with the Nike was like he was trying to get a fifteen million dollar check. Yes, and it was for you know he was going to expose some story. And, yeah, nonsense. And that never happened. Uh, also, next week uh, they will probably more than likely have a verdict. <laughs> In the Harvey Weinstein trial, oh, finally, they, yeah, we, most people forgot about it, right? I, it seems mm-hmm. like it. Um, they, I don't understand they why just he closing stayed. arguments today. I don't uh, know why he stayed in America to deal with this. I would have fucking bailed and went to Panama or some shit. I mean, look, try not to be a rapist, but if you're a rapist and you've got five hundred million dollars, get the fuck out of town. <laughs> here's bro. what here's what he said: his exact words. He goes, "I have a great lawyer, and I think everything will be fine." So he hired this woman. She's a powerhouse attorney. This is female. I think he's no. been on the mountaintop for a little too long. That's what I think, too. <laughs> yeah. That's what I think, too. This, this, we'll is, not the, next week. this is not the time to try and be, uh, be a tough guy. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, Bobby, where can everybody find you on social media and all that uh, stuff? Bobby Henline. You know, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. Bobby Henline. Check out Forging Forward, the new nonprofit. Uh, forging, or, forging, I can't even talk. Forgingforward.org. Um, if you haven't seen this great movie, it's on Amazon called Man's Best Friend. Mm-hmm. I play a Marine in that, a Marine Gunny. 
Um, it's pretty good. It's a film about a Marine comes back, has a lot of trouble, and you'll see what he dealt with, how he dealt with the TBI and the PTSD. And it's a really good. Uh, it's a kind of a tearjerker one, but I think a lot of people relate to it. And you were in Shameless. I was in Shameless. Yes. Yeah. I got to do uh, one episode. I got to play Pyro Polly. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, having watching Frank describe me, using some of my lines about having an ass face and stuff like that. It was, yeah. I was just cracking up. It was, it was great to see. I got one small part. I get to say yes. Actually, I said yes and all right. Uh, I was supposed to be nervous. At least you had lines. Yeah. Oh, Sometimes I, you, I they cut your lines. Well, the funny thing is I didn't have lines to begin with. I was, she was just, you know, Fiona was going to come up to me, hey, Pyro Polly, and I just look at her, and she's like, okay, I need you for this or that, and kind of that's it. And the director's like, well, you could say something if you want. I'm like, I wasn't about to piss anybody else mm-hmm. off, right? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just a little man here. Like, I'm just grad- What if you started job. quoting, like, Shakespeare in the Park or something <laughs> like that? <laughs> <laughs> no, like, excuse me, sir. Or, like, Michael Scott did that one time, re- uh, recite an entire uh, episode of Law and Order. <laughs> <Dun, dun, dun. laughs> Do we get charged for making that noise? I don't know. Probably. How it works. Probably <laughs> going to bill us. Ching. It would be great if you would have told Emmy Rossum, who's won like multiple Golden Globes. <laughs> I don't think you were doing that correctly. Right. I, I really didn't feel Can, that. You I want, didn't feel that. You should really try another one. I'll talk if it comes out more natural. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll give you some lines. Like, but they tell my, my character has been out of prison for one year, and I'm trying to go right work in this little Jiffy Mart thing. And you're nervous because the only people that know that your name, Pyro Polly, are crooks and cops. So you're nervous when she comes up and asks. I'm like, okay, I'll go from there. I'm nervous anyway, so this is easy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Uh, look, man, you're an inspiring dude. Unbelievably grateful you stopped by to do the show. Um, check him out if he comes near a city near you and uh, follow Bobby Henline on uh, social media. Thanks for being here, man. No, I appreciate for it. Uh, for D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway, uh, Bobby Henline, I'm Ross Patterson. We're the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone.